Welcome back, Square Steaders. It's been a minute, hasn't it? It's been like three months. Uh, we've we've kind of been busy, and we're gonna go over that on this video right now. As the light startled our eyes, we let go of the skies. So, what are we doing? We have been clearing land. Let's talk about that first. Uh, we do it every year. We clear land and we get uh, the the majority of the trees out of here. We leave a lot of our big trees. You can kind of look behind me. Most of these are fairly good sized trees uh, that we leave and we get rid of all the small trees and we end up with kind of a silvopasture type deal. We've got plenty of shade for our animals. Uh, it looks beautiful, but it's still enough sunlight to come in and grow the grass. Uh, big fans of that. Now we, we live on some pretty dense woods. You can see behind me up on this hill, there are quite, I mean, the, the woods are dense. So it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to, um, cut all the smaller trees and hand pick all the trees that we want to keep. And in this general area, right where we're at right now is where we're going to, uh, focus on our pasture raised, uh, poultry. Now I know it seems a little desolate right now, but all of that is about to change. This isn't the only area. Um, this will probably be towards the end of the season that we actually get some birds in this area. We've got, we'll focus on them being in other areas um, until then, but this is another area that we want to clear out and allow more pasture. Now with that, yes, I said it was going to be for the meat birds, but it's actually going to be for everything. Uh, we rotate all of our animals um, and, and get that diversified grazing, etc. happening. So, let me show you something. So, if you watched our last video, I talked about uh, clearing out a spot for our house. House may get put on hold. Um, we haven't even thought about the house. We, we've, um, but we've still been clearing out for the, for the house. Now, what, this little ash pile right here. That's where that fire was, okay? And if you remember that video, all of this was full of trees. So this is one of the big, big areas we've been working in. Uh, and I also mentioned, you know, it's all about the view, y'all. Well, our view has definitely started to improve. We've cleared over there as well. Let me show you something else. Now, if you are a long time square steader and you have been following us from day one, uh, if you remember this video. I get asked a lot why we leave our stumps three to four foot off the ground like this. Uh, I have a, a, a backhoe attachment for my tractor and it gives me extra leverage to, to pull the stumps up is why I do it. Or at least that's what I tell them. The truth is, it's just a place to put my coffee cup. Now where that was just shot is exactly where I'm standing right now. If you can see behind me, everything is clear now that first that I don't know that was like video four or something for uh, first some of our very first videos and as you can see uh, big changes that was just a little over a year ago uh, so we're constantly clearing the stain clearing everything out trying to get this farm bigger and more productive and that's just part of the process and uh, everything's looking good isn't it so Let's move on. Now I do have another area that, that we cleared land at uh, over the course of the last couple months. Um, not going to get into that right now, but uh, actually I've got two other areas. And I've got a big one that we're going to, I'm going to show you here in a little while, but that's not really the point of all this. We're going to move on and we're going to talk about goats. What's changed with the goats? Hand in hand, building castles out of sand. Reaching for the ground. Okay, so where we're actually standing in, and this is probably going to disappoint some people, 
Uh, remember we did the uh, carport chicken house build. That's what this is. Um, we have kind of abandoned that and found a larger need for this building to be used for other things. You hear that clicking? It's an electric fence. Uh, to keep our goats in. Now we have our feed in here and some other miscellaneous things. Uh, but the big thing with goats today is this lady right here. She is about to start our kidding season. We are just within, I'm talking about the goat, not the chicken. <laughs> she is about to start our kidding season. She is within hours of giving birth. Uh, we have some more goats over here. And Jesse is sitting here patiently on her phone playing Candy Crush, waiting, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for Miss Pandora to, uh, to give birth. So, uh, what else has changed? Oh, we got rid of the boys. So the boys did their job um, and our, you know, the results are about to happen. And uh, we did sell them. So that's, I think that's it. Other than them being moved over into this area, uh, they're not in their old area. They're, they're now, we've, we've decided to turn this into the, the goat barn simply so that we can have uh, area to, to milk the goats and then have their babies and and keep them out of the rain etc so uh this will be expanded and that's that's future future stuff anyway so all of you that have been sitting around waiting for part three of that chicken house build carport chicken house i think is what it's called it's probably gonna it's not gonna happen This is our bull, or bull calf. His name is Fireball. He is about seven months old now. And we have Ginger over here. Uh, she's 18 months and I'm trying to get a view here of baby. The baby's name is Aurora, a little heifer. Super cute. Uh, she was born on New Year's Day. And up on the hill is Ebony. And she is, I think, nine months old now. So these are Dexter cows, and yes, they're small in stature. Uh, they're a multi-purpose breed uh, for both milk and meat. Uh, they're not considered a miniature cow, but they are a small cow. Uh, super cool. And this guy acts like he don't like people, and then he does. <laughs> so yeah, they are over here in this area. Um, this area that we had cleared, if you remember, uh, well, other side, Diversified Land Solutions, our friend Tony, uh, cleared all this with his mulcher uh, last April. We've let it sit. The mulch has started decomposing. Uh, there was still, in certain spots, it was pretty thick, so not a lot of the, the winter rye took, but some of it did. He's just a bull. Always all up in your face. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they're going to be out here for a little while, and then we will continue playing the game of rotating them. Uh, they'll be back over the sh across the street if you can see me see behind me that gate and wooden fence um, That's another three acres that we just purchased. I'll go into that here in a minute, but uh, The horse is over there now and we'll we'll rotate back and forth along with chickens and pigs and etc etc But uh, that's where we're at right now with the Dexter cows super excited to have them we didn't think cows were gonna happen for another 10 years or so and uh we got to push the fast forward button and pretty happy about that. Check it out, Jesse made me a new hoodie. Fancy 
Uh, but I have to put this hoodie on because we're about to take a trip and I'm, gonna, I'm about to show you something else that, that uh, some two things that happened uh, while we've been gone that we've acquired. First of all, remember in the last video I told you that uh, we need to get some sort of machine to transport us up and down all of these hills. Well, we acquired our machine. Check that out. We got us a uh, Kawasaki Mule. Fancy, huh? Yeah, I have a I have a big vinyl cutter, so I went ahead and put some logos on it. Uh, it can be a six seater. Uh, but we mainly just keep it full of tools. It's got its own tool. We've got a toolbox for it and everything. So, yes, this is a tool we use probably at least three times a day. We're covering a lot of ground these days. We went from, you know, uh, uh, having about an acre on our farm that we were constantly going around feeding animals to, there's our cows, to, I don't know, I don't know how many acres we're covering all the time. This is the other thing that we got. We had woods. We, we, we purchased this lot across from us and that was all woods. And uh, my buddy, Tony, let me see, focus here. My buddy over here at uh, uh, Diversified Land Solutions, Tony. So if y'all are in the state of Arkansas and you need some mulching done, uh, to clear off land, some some dirt moved, whatever. He's got the solution. Give him a call. I'll get. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, went over here and we purchased about 3.6 acres, and we had it cleared off, and we fenced in about three of those acres. And uh, so let's jump in the side by side, and I'm going to take you back there and show you some some cool things about that. Before we go, uh, my dad got me this cool gimbal uh, for Christmas. Super excited about that. Uh, so what do you say we give it a, a little test on the way over there? So we have gone from goats giving birth. Let's go. Sorry, this won't be as smooth as that last video with the gimbal. We gotta, we gotta hurry. I can hear her pushing. Happening, y'all. Kidding season is here. So many changes on the farm. Every day is a new thing. Pretty exciting stuff, y'all. Alright. I can hear it. Let's go into the newly acquired goat barn. What happened? I don't know. She was pushing. I heard it. It's big. It's big? Yep. I heard it all the way up to 
Yeah. Other it's pasture. Big. It's big. It's just a big, a big baby, a or big baby. oh wow, it's hanging out. Yeah, and she's she would not want to push. Its nose is right there. Come on, Penny. She needs to get on it, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come on, girl. It's right there. Right there. Here he comes. Come on, come on. Come on, girl. exciting wasn't it uh, one of the biggest big business ventures we're starting this year is with our pasture poultry operation and uh, that's hitting off next week oh, we have 150 chicks that are showing up at the end of next week and to house that many chicks uh, we've had to step up our game and this is our new brooder house um, it's just a storage building it's uh, I'm still building it uh, still painting it and stuff like that and I'm getting a little behind because they're going to be here next week but to go along with this is is I have built an Ohio brooder now I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail as to what that is um, because I'm going to do a a, uh, a future video on our version of the Ohio brooder I'll give you a quick glimpse of it it's still sitting in the shop uh, right now but um, that is happening real quick so let me show you that real quick okay so uh sorry for the mess i'm still building this but um this is a four foot by four foot ohio brooder um it's going to involve a couple temperature sensors and and i will go into all of that very shortly um in the coming weeks but you can see there's there's some bulbs in there uh and that keeps the chicks But that is going to keep the cheeks uh, warm uh, in these cold these cold nights and everything. Um, I also have some heat lamps I can I can add uh, to heat up the building if necessary to to get those those temperatures right. Uh, and we even have those heating pad poultry heating pads. Uh, you remember that you know we gave some away uh, last year. Anyway, 
Uh, so yeah, the temperature is pretty critical on in the first uh, stages of a chick's life in order to maximize growth potential. So yeah, this is a big addition, a lot of building, a lot of planning going into this, and uh, I hope I get everything done before they show up Thursday or Friday. So we'll see. So there are two more things that I still have to build uh, in order to complete this whole pastured poultry uh, endeavor. Uh, one of those things is our trailer on how, you know, when we go to a farmer's market um, and we've already set up some locations in town to sell. Um, that setup is, has to be pretty specific with freezers and refrigerators and the, and the requirements for that. Uh, so uh, I've still got to build it and I have to build an eggmobile because eggs will be another big thing that we do. So constantly going on this on this poultry thing we've got a lot of work to do still but behind me uh, you see the ever familiar John Siskovich tractors uh, there's two of them I have three of them but the, here's two of them we're, we're cleaning up and getting ready because three weeks from four weeks from now uh, these uh, chicks will be hitting the pasture something else we're trying this year is the meat shawl uh, and enclose them enclose the chicks with Poultry netting. We've we've uh, gotten some more poultry netting, electric poultry netting to keep them in. We're going to try this. Uh, this, in theory, I've never used one before, but in theory, this should allow us to hold a lot more uh, chicks than these tractors. Nothing against the tractors; they're a great design. But we are upping our scale past a homestead version or a homestead scale into a production scale of pasture poultry so we need to up everything else everything from our brooder to our chicken tractors so we're going to try the meat shaw out this year uh, just finished building it a few weeks ago as well so yeah lots of building a lot of a lot of upping up upping our game on this whole endeavor uh, so you know we gotta we gotta start somewhere to start bringing in the money for square one farms and pasture poultry i think is going to be step number one and hopefully we can get into the pastured and woodlot pigs next even though we already have our cows cows are probably three three to five years down the road before we ever get into that market but uh hopefully pigs are next anyway y'all i hope you've enjoyed this uh little debacle of everything that's been going on and why you haven't seen us in the last three months every uh Things like that goat being born and, you know, while you're trying to do something else is just how it's been these last three months. And, and I'm not complaining. We're, everything's moving in the right directions. Everything's uh, very exciting. I just hate it that y'all have missed out on a lot of it because I just simply haven't had time to even pick up the camera. And I definitely haven't had time to edit. So we're going to try again. We're almost into chicken season and everything else. And we're going to get back on this YouTube uh wagon and i hope to see y'all's pretty faces even more so until the next time y'all this is mike with square one farms y'all be good